Now, the only thing we need to do is pick a color and we can change this in real time. Create shader, unlit graph, dear shader. Okay, so it's not shader programming, it's shader graph, which is, but it's basically visual scripting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, a deer. We're gonna start with a basic one. I think what I'll do is use the white one. That's snow deer. All right, uh, we'll call this deer. Save it, export it. And then I'll say texture 2D underscore main text. Default is deer. Drag this in, sample. There it is. And then we go this, uh, we take this, subtract one minus that. So we just got that. And then when we come out, we want this to be a transparent shader. It's two sided. Great. That's the color. That is the alpha. So now we've got a deer. Perfect. And we want this to be a quad. That's the output. Now, what I want to do is replace a bunch of colors. So there is a replace color node. And um, this is how we're going to do it. So the hard part about this is that we're replacing a bunch of colors to a bunch of other colors, depending on something, which means it's probably more worthwhile to just get a bunch of sprites based on colors we like and then pick one of them. Now that I think about it, the only thing this will save us is we can have one sprite sheet. Ah, you know what? Let's do it this way for fun. So uh, that's going in and we're going to replace I need to pick the color. Oh, there we go. Pick this color. Replace that to whatever I want. And then that comes uh, out. So now I can replace the color. Now it's a it's a bloody deer. But instead, I want to say color. We'll just call it color. And we're going to replace it with whatever color we choose back here. And we can set this to be whatever we want, like this, for example. Then we do that again. Put that in, replace the next color down, which in this case is gonna be this one with some other color. The easy way to do this would be to take our initial color and give it some multiple. and then send this out. And if we multiply it down just towards blue, so we could say one, 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 and then we go, we wanna go down a little bit towards the RGB. We can make these ones like 0 0.8, 0 0.8, a little bit less red. Let's call it 0 0.6. And if we keep doing that over and over again, we'll end up with something that's pretty reasonable. It won't be exactly in the palette. It's got some logic to it, which is good. There we go. It's actually looking pretty good. If I'm being perfectly honest with myself, this math was pretty good. So now we only pick one color and it'll find a series of colors that are just this ratio over and over again this one to that one and then this goes here looks pretty good right this kind of works it only really doesn't work around here where you would probably want to instead go back the other way maybe or retain a lot more of the red like that and um, we can achieve that by again having like a split it's interesting, you can't, I was saying this on, on stream, but you, you really can't just, so in the YouTube video, there's a there's one point where I talk about color um, and how I was talking about colors converging. So for green, it makes a lot of sense to do that.
for yellow, you can do that, right? So green, yellow, you can do that. You can't do the same curve and do it here because for something to go red at the very bottom doesn't make much sense. So instead you do something like this. You notice it's like you start up here, you end down here and everything it's kind of like an onion or a basketball or a globe or something where you start doing that. But actually, because this is a circular space, on the edges, you don't quite do that. Instead, you go back this way. And again, this only refers to that filtering that I was talking about, where you shift towards yellow at the top and blue at the bottom. This is just one algorithm and it looks, it looks like this. And it's the same thing. So this then is the same as this, where you swing down this way. And there's a division right there and right here. That's how I do it. So I guess we would want to like encode this. So these colors, do, you know, like in the, in the logic of the filter that we've been describing, these colors don't see a lot of action, like this triangle and this triangle, but all of these colors get sh shifted in their respective directions. That's that's what I would be encoding. Right now, what we've been doing with our deer looks like this. All of um, all of the hues where it looks kind of like a diagonal top left bottom right shift. So all of these work well, but all of these look really bad. And you can see that here, right? If I go to the deer now and I shift to like a red or something, it doesn't look right. This or none of this works until we swing back around to blue and then it kind of starts working again, but not until we come out of blue and towards green. This half works okay. This half doesn't work because all of these colors want to swing back around to red instead of towards blue before they hit the bottom. So we could do something very simple. We could add some very, very simple logic where we just flip it once we get to a certain point. Yeah, so we could we could definitely do something like this where we say, you know, uh, these colors all go like that. And then once we hit the edge of blue, we start flipping this way, right? And that's sort of closer to this. So yeah, I mean, the positive and negative look like this. You just copy this. And then instead you shift this one down and this one up, leave green in the middle. And you could just flip between whichever one you wanted. So this one would be uh, less blue more red and this would work more for maybe these colors and really what we're doing is uh all we need to do here is do a, a branch branch and if it's this it's that and if it's that it's that and then we put this in and then we say comparison so we basically say if the hue is greater than whatever this line is 50% or something like that, then we go the other way. So if I add 0.6, let's just think about that for a second. If I add 0.6 to this number, zoop, and then I modulo it, will it be above 0.6? So the answer is no, but if I do it for this one, it will be yes. Oh, that actually works. That actually is what I wanted. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, cool. I got it. All right, flips back over around here. But that's actually pretty close to what I wanted. It's just this side of the spectrum that gets that treatment. So just to recap <laughs> what we did in this shader, this is basically a shader graph to graphical representation of shader language that you can use to manipulate your images in your games to do cool stuff with them. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a sprite, it's the deer, I'm stripping it of all of its alpha. That's just a nice thing that I tend to do to make it so that I've got a clean image here. Otherwise it does some interesting processing with it that just looks a little, a little confusing. So uh, I take away the alpha and then I start replacing colors on my base image. So the base image is just a white deer. 
and I start replacing colors one by one. I pick a color and then replace it, pick a darker top, the darker color, replace it, darker, replace it, darker, replace it, darker, replace it. And every time I pass the result into the next color replacement filter. So you can see I'm starting with just this and then a bit more, bit more, bit more, and then all of it. And every time I do that, what I'm replacing it with is some math. And what that does is I take my initial input color, which is in this case, this brown, and we can set that to whatever color we want. Uh, some of these are from the palette, like this one. So I take this green, and what I'm essentially doing is picking between one of two color shift multipliers. This is red, green, and blue. So I'm choosing to, to multiply by some factor of red, green, and blue every time, and I'm re-multiplying it uh, on itself. So this green is just the green uh, in here. Then I multiply it by one of these two numbers. Then I multiply that, then I multiply that by the number, by that, by the number. And what that does is essentially moves us through the color space from here down into wherever we wanna go in a multiplying way. So it's like one and then there and then there and then there and then there and then there. And the more dramatic that factor is, the more dramatic the shift through is going to be. So in this case, what I'm doing for all values that are sort of towards green, blue, yellow, as opposed to red, purple, pink, all of the green, blue, yellow ones keep most of their blue and then they keep a little bit less of their green and then keep even less of their red. So they're basically shifting it out away from red towards blue. And the colors that are closer to red, instead, what I do is I just shift them by a different variation on that that kind of tries to preserve a little more of that red. Still preserves a fair bit of the blue, but tries to keep some of the red as we come down so that the color doesn't leave its, uh, its space too much. And that's it, that's what I do. It looks kind of complicated, it's a lot of stuff going on, but uh, it works. So the next thing you wanna do is basically apply this to something. Get a deer, remember it's the white deer. And what we wanna do is take the shader and create a new material. In this case, it is the deer material. And shaders need materials to work. And all you have to do is grab the shader that we just created and drop it onto the material. And you can see there it's already working. And then in the deer, on the sprite renderer from the sprite that we just dragged in, instead of the sprite's default material, you just take the deer material. And there you go. Now, the only thing we need to do is pick a color. So there's our color wheel, and we can change this in real time or whenever we want. We could have a rainbow deer that just does this all the time. We could have a deer that's less saturated. It's more, more closer to white. So all we have to set is an initial value, which we can set in code, and that'll give us a randomly colored deer or a deer that's based on that color, basically. Pretty cool. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.